course. We are Hefla TV. I'm Coucher once again, joined by Mike Loras. And as you can see, X Game having a couple of players switch out between game number one and two. But what the fucker is back for them? An actual standard member. No idea why he has a stand in tag, but in any case, Mike, man, Alpha, are they going to take the game, second game also? And X Game, they could have had the game if they just played like minor differences in the last game, like not having. The Weaver actually farm up, having him roam around with the team early on, I think was a crucial mistake for X game. And then, you know, they just got picked off one too many times. The Batrider pick from Alpha really doing some work for them. So for X game, they have to make sure that they have initiation and they don't make completely stupid mistakes. That's, you know, not that hard, I'm sure. But uh, if they do that, then they have a very good shot at defeating Team Alpha right now. As their win, Alpha, in the last game was not really the most convincing. Yeah, it's definitely far from convincing. I mean, it's like 60 minutes plus. Both teams had lost a couple of racks, but X came now. They get their hands on the X. One of the just complete flavor of the month heroes. It has a pretty high win rate, even in the just complete pro scene as well at the moment. Or just top teams. Definitely worth a pick, but Team Alpha, Vengeful Spirit, Pat Rather again. Yeah, well, I mean, it seems there, like a reasonable. Yeah, there you go. It's it works. Mean, why fix something that ain't broken? Yeah, and it's a little bit worse versus Axe. I think just because uh, Axe will... Str or actually, it might be a little bit better versus Axe if you match up the Batrider and the Axe, but blinking into a lasso into an Axe is not something you really want to do uh, ever because he's way too tanky. And if you try to grab one of his allies, then you have to deal with the threat of a call just interrupting all of that. So it's a little bit more risky right now for Team Alpha. The laning situation might be a little better because Batrider versus Axe seems to be a little bit easier. But uh, yeah, now Slark being picked up from X game. The initiation power is still in the hands of Alpha for the most part, but you're not going to be able to easily lasso a Slark or an Axe. And you also have to worry about Axe blinking on top of you. So this is going to be a much closer initiation game. Yeah, definitely so. It's just X game. They wanted to make damn sure with the Slark pick that they're going to have something that will not completely fall, fall over every single time against the Batrider. Of course, even Slark might get caught without being able to activate the Dark Pact first. But at least you have a chance to survive that. Or maybe just be really fast on your fingers and just press your R, get the Shadow Dance activated and make it so that you even can't get lassoed. Now though, next set of bands, we do have a Disruptor band now by Alpha. Ayo of course is already banned so that's not going to be it. Are they really that afraid of just getting the Batrider glimpsed back, or do they have something else in mind? I mean, what would be extremely afraid of the, a Disruptor? Hmm. Well, just pretty much anyone who relies on these AoE skills. If they want to grab a Tidehunter, then Disruptor is usually a direct response pick to that, but I don't really know if that's going to be super likely. Uh, just the matchup versus Axe is just too terrible that they probably would avoid that. Uh, any hero with mobility is usually shut down by Disruptor, but I'm actually kind of questioning whether or not it would be better for Alpha to grab that instead of ban it out, just because it is so good versus Slark. Yeah, it's pretty decent against Axe as well, to be honest. He comes in, gets the Berserker Skull, it just climps him out to at least make sure that nobody's going to get Culling Bladed down. So, not too sure what Team Alpha is thinking. Of course, they maybe were hoping to get their hands on the Lion as the secondary support, and never mind, not waiting long at all. Ancient Apparition almost an immediate pickup as the third one for them. Definitely not a bad hero to help against Slark, just negate that Shadow Dance health regeneration, which is a huge part of Slark's survivability in general. But Team Alpha, are we possibly even going to see something like a Faceless Void safe lane from them now to just set up perfect Ice Blast all the time? It's a possibility, but I'm still, I'm not convinced that the power of Faceless Void Ancient Apparition is strong enough to warrant Faceless Void going up against an Axe in-game. Like, melee core versus Axe is something you want to avoid pretty much at all costs if you're Team Alpha, so it will be strong, but I don't know if it's going to be strong enough. I mean, if they had the Witch Doctor Ancient Apparition, then yeah, you probably would go for it, but Venge Ancient Apparition, I don't really think it's strong enough synergy with the Chronosphere, unless they grab someone like an Invoker 4th and then grab a Faceless Void 5th, which is possible, but it just depends on what X game pick 3rd to, you know, determine what falls into line afterwards. So Ancient Apparition, as you said, really good against that Slark. Shadow Dance, if you get tagged with the ice, means that you won't be hit. It's like you're not going to be attacked, but you also won't gain any regeneration. And usually that's what you want Shadow Dance to do. Just give you a little bit of extra regen in those fights. 
Yeah, it's definitely true when the Rolex came. They also still need support. The best supports out there pretty much have either been picked or banned out already. Sky yep, Skyrath Mage is the one hero that is available and probably the best to go for. Also just Berserker Skull into Mystic Player, easy setups for easy kills. So far, anybody in Team Alpha will die to that combination, I think. Yeah, the lineup of Team Alpha far from durable right now. It's not too late to grab a couple of strength heroes or something if you want to try to resist the Scarath Mage damage, but it's probably just not going to be worth it at all. So X game going to grab a pretty solid combination and should be looking for a stunner afterwards. Uh, something like a Rubik seems reasonable here. You don't have the best skills to steal, but you at the very least just need or want someone to help position for that Scarath Mage to do that extra bit of damage early on. And Slark Axe can pick up the slack in the damage department. So. Play stun of utmost importance now for X game. And for Alpha, I mean, I don't really think they have any direction they need to go given what X game have. It's going to be a Medusa pick, and it's a ranged hero versus Axe, so that's a checkbox that you could check off right there. It's also a decent hero versus Slark because of that Stone Gaze. Yeah, I mean, st Stone Gaze definitely is an ability that can turn around entire team fights, or at the very least, just delay out the outcome of the team fight or allow or buy enough time for their just teammates to come in or anything like that. And Medusa, of course, massive late game. X game so far, they're definitely having a slightly more aggressive lineup with their cores. Then again, Batrider is there for Team Alpha, so they themselves are going to probably actively be looking for those pickoffs. But with the Medusa being on the board, there's a pretty high chance that we're going to once again get a pretty damn long game. But Nyx Assassin might make it a bit shorter because... Maybe not a, like a direct counter to the Medusa, but definitely helps out in just handling that hero. Yeah, Mana Burn versus Medusa is exactly what you want. It's one of the more direct counters that you can grab. And right now, a support Nyx Assassin doesn't seem like the most unreasonable pick for the X game KZ side, assuming it is going to be a support, which it doesn't have to be. But uh, between that and Skyrath Mage, they're packing quite a lot of damage. They could just wander around just the two of them once they both hit that level 6 mark, and then whoever they run into is probably just going to die. So it's a lot of damage from X game, a direct response to Medusa. It's maybe going to hurt their lanes a little bit because they are going to be very melee heavy, but I think it's something that they can work around. Uh, it'll be difficult, though, since Team Alpha, they're all ranged. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit hard for them. and Well, we'll see how X game even choose to run this and which role the Nyx Assassin will be. At the moment, I'd expect it to be support, but who knows? They might also be running like a Nyx offlane, maybe even a Nyx mid lane to guarantee those early levels. And just have Axe even jungle as a greedy 4 position, something like that. Because Team Alpha with their lineup at the moment, I don't really see them punishing an Axe jungle, for example. Yeah, They can do it with their two supports if they had another core who would be able to join them very easily. And Batrider would be that core. But that only happens once he grabs a Blink Dagger. Like, up until then, it's just not going to happen. So, uh, for Team Alpha, they're probably going to be playing this rather slowly and basically, you know, revolving their gameplay around this Medusa. They'll try to go for kills when they can with the Bat Rider, but it's not even easy to grab kills off of the Lasso just because Vengeful Spirit Ancient Apparition won't really be doing the highest amount of damage. And you need a lot of damage if you're going to be killing off a Slark or an Axe. Yeah, it's just for Team Alpha in general. They have a couple of key points that they need to reach. First, blink on the Batrider for sure, just such a core item on any Batrider or any team with a Batrider. Second, Ancient Depression having level 6. If they get those early enough, they can definitely just start fighting X game actively. But of course, for X game themselves, it's just Axe Blink Dagger, possibly an X Assassin like Vendetta, maybe Skyref level 6. Because Impale into Mystic Flare, easy kills, Pursuit Call into Mystic Flare. Should also be easy kills, even up against a Medusa, to be honest. At least early on, before Medusa gets, like, a few ultimate orb items. Yeah, that's a truckload of damage, and still Alpha, even though they have kind of a tankier carry hero, it only really happens late game where Medusa gets that tankiness, so uh, the burst damage of X game is going to be extremely high, and they also have the execution from the Axe, in case, uh, in case that ever becomes relevant. They probably don't even need it, honestly, with the amount of burst damage they have, just with the Mystic Flare. So, Alpha, maybe they're going to look for a little bit more of a tankier hero right now. Looking for a mid-hero, it looks like. Expecting the Slark or an Assassin, these are both melee heroes to go up against, and it's going to be a Razor pick. 
it's reasonable like in lane versus what X game have, and it's actually really good against the Axe. I'm just not sure. There's something about this pick just isn't sitting well with me right now. I think it's probably just most racers you see these days completely underperform. Every now and then, yes, you're going to have a good racer game. And like I said, on lane, it's going to be good for him to be up against any kind of melee hero. Maybe with an Agony Setter, they're going to be looking for a little bit of extra push. It is decent up against Skyrath Mage, though, because Skyrath Mage, lots of single target spells for him to cast. And that... God, I'm even forgetting the name of that. Unstable Current is going to be helping out the Razor, or at least, well, maybe not helping out him as much as just hurting the Skyrath Mage at the same time. Also, it is a mech carrier for Team Alpha, so maybe that was what they're looking for. Yeah, having someone who's more on the tanky side would be really nice. Pretty sure Viper was in the pool, and I think in general it's a preferable pick, at least now in Dota, versus that Razor. You're not really going to get that much value out of that damage drain. Like, Slark is the one you want to be draining out, but with the Pounce, he's not going to be always be in your range. So, this Razor, is going, his success is going to depend on how well he does in lane. If he does well, then he's going to do well everywhere else. If not, well, then clearly he's not. And the last pick for X game, it is going to be that Phoenix. So, a minus attack speed hero versus the Medusa. A hero that will not have to worry about too much CC on the other end. This Phoenix can have a pretty good time in this game. Yeah, also just, if you get the Fire Spirits correctly before going into the Supernova, Alpha, they don't have the greatest lineup at all to deal with the Egg, to be honest. Especially once the Supernova is like level 3 and requires a couple of extra hits to be destroyed. So, it might be a pretty great pick, to be honest. They have like Berserker's Call to set things up for that Egg to possibly even explode and stun following. The Pounce maybe to keep people in range, Nyx Assassin Impale. So I, I don't mind that Phoenix pick at all at the moment, and like you said, just Alpha, they don't have too much lockdown, so Icarus Dive, in most cases, should be able to get him back to safety from the offlane. Yeah, and also if you're going to be hunting down the line with the Nyx Assassin and Vendetta, Phoenix can stay pretty far away, but also contribute a lot in those ganks, just being able to Icarus Dive in, lay down the Fire Spirits, Supernova if needed, but... Yeah, just having that uh, long-range way to get in for Watafaka without having to buy that Blink Dagger is going to be really nice, and we'll see if it actually works out for them. I actually like X Games Draft, even though it is very melee-heavy. It's uh, very responsive to what Alpha have. It is actually not a terrible draft, it's far from it, in fact. So they're going to send 4K Warrior Mantis up towards the top lane as the solo Slark, it looks like. Magicka going to be handling the Nyx Assassin. Got amazing on the Skyrath Mage. Stalkat's going to be handling the Axe. Looks like he's going to jungle. And Watafaka is going to be playing the Phoenix. And you already <laughs> want to report their own axe for some reason. Maybe, like, no, bounty. I'm not going to go lane. I'm not. Or I guess bounty run, yeah. But for the side of Alpha, Pakamono playing the Razor this time around. We'll see if he's going to be half as good as his Shadow Fiend was. Hurry up on the Vengeful Spirit once again. Second game in a row is Migi handling the Ancient Apparition. Mid lane, we're going to have King on the Medusa. And last but not least, will be ZLNTZ up on the Batrider. <laughs> Man, that name, I have no idea how you should pronounce that in one go. Man, that's what happens when you don't have vowels in your name. Isn't. <laughs> so, sound about right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, as far as... Yeah, sure, I'll say it sounds about right. Over towards mid lane, Magicka dropping very low. The Snake, only level 1 though, not quite doing enough. But let's take a look at some of these lanes. Because we have Watafaka going up against three heroes down towards bottom. He's going to get into a man fight with the... Vengeful Spirit. There's no Magic Missile, but there's also no Icarus Dive away. Watafaka will barely survive that. Vengeful Spirit doing quite a bit of damage and zoning out the Phoenix hard over in the bottom lane. This is not going to be a fun lane for Phoenix, though he should be getting a decent amount of experience. If he gets too close, Razor's extra burst damage with Plaza Field can do him in. And, uh, well, Phoenix is already down on his regen. Do you think that for X game, would there have been any better way to lane this? Just maybe send somebody other than the Nyx Assassin mid, maybe even an Axe for example. But then again, that would have meant that Nyx Assassin is kind of pushed into a support role and might not get the guaranteed levels and might not have the desired impact up against Medusa. Or well, I guess once you get a couple of levels, Nyx Assassin shouldn't struggle that much against the Medusa, I guess. Yeah, I think you could also swap the Nyx Assassin with the Slark and have Slark go up against the Medusa or go up against whoever is going to be uh, you know, in the mid lane, and then have Nyx Assassin just safe lane farm until he gets that level 6 mark, and then rotate someone else in, like have the Axe or the Skyrath Mage take control of the lane afterwards, and that would be a nice way of just shuffling your heroes around to maximize the level effectiveness. Maybe they're going to do that in this game, have Magicka just sit in the mid lane until he gets level 6, and then put someone else in the mid lane. 
But uh, for right now, the lanes for X game, they're not really the greatest. Like, the Nyx Assassin, as you said, needs a couple more levels before he can effectively deal with Medusa. But even then, he will be always chipped down. And there's nothing really the Nyx Assassin can do to prevent this, except for get his bottle and hope for the best. Wait, I'm amazing. Never mind, not going to get harassed too much. He even goes for the concussive shot in return, but I don't think Mantis will get the pounce off. The battle rider is just trying to just juggle things, go forth and back, left and right. So it's gonna be fine for now as what the fuck I'm about to hit level 3. Does have at least Icarus time now, so should be a hell of a lot more safe than he was beforehand. Stalkite in the meantime has hit already level 4 and a half. Tranquil boots will be finished if he just gets the boots delivered to himself. Before that, unfortunately cannot stack up another camp because well the timing isn't correct for it. But it's just gonna go farm up. The Satyr camp, probably the best camp for an axe, I think, right? Yeah, you want, as far as the uh, medium camps are concerned, more units means that you have a higher chance to spin, or more chances to spin, I guess. And uh, they give a decent amount of gold. Centaur is the worst, second to mud golems for those mediums, I think. Yeah, probably so. I mean, just centaurs, they do so much damage to the axe. You don't really spin all that often either, unless you're just ridiculously lucky. At the moment, though, mid lane, Magicka. Who should indeed be Ronin, previous uh, or next KZ member from 2009 is what they said in the lobby. So coming back from like I guess a real long period of retirement, I don't know. <laughs> but hey, when it, you need stand-ins, you just gotta call on everyone. Yeah, it sure looks like it. But it does have a bottle, so having that bottle definitely makes his life a hell of a lot easier up against Medusa. So far, as kind of to be expected from any Nyx assassin maxing out the impale. But if you're up against the Medusa, you leave the Spike Carapace as one and start maxing out mana burn after the Impale, or do you still go for maxing out Carapace? Hmm, well, I think getting more mana burn in general is not really a terrible way to play the hero. Like, Spike Carapace, the stun duration is nice and everything, and you know, having it a little bit more often is also going to be nice. But if you're going to be in the mid lane as an assassin, I think in general, if you go for mana burn, then you will be fine. It lets you apply a little bit more pressure to the enemies, and especially up against that Medusa, it's going to be a little more valuable. So I think max out Impale, get Vendetta wherever you can. Maybe put like two points into Spike Carapace, but get grabbing Mana Burn is going to be fantastic. It'll help him gank a lot more. Certainly so, and at the moment, just Axe having a completely free farm in the jungle, of course. He's not getting that much out of it, Min, and Enigma might be slightly higher at times. Or just an axe with a slightly better my camp spawn, something like that. But still, almost level 6, so not doing bad by any means. If you can get the, le your level 6 by about the same time as the mid laners hit it, you're always going to be well off, to be honest. Especially if you're in a like 4 position role. But looking at the other lanes, oh, mid lane, they're going to go for a gank. There's the Vendetta, never mind, no Vendetta, but Impale misses, so... That's the first gank, and nothing really comes of it. Yeah, it is a little bit harder now to uh, hit Impales, and Medusa's pathing there it looked like she was going to run up river. I don't really know why you would. You would probably just be better, uh, you know, trying to get the angle up the ramp, but Magicka either way is going to miss, and Stalkat also had an angle there to call first and then use Battle Hunger. You want to use Battle Hunger first so that you get the damage flowing earlier, but he had a chance to get the kill there. But uh, I guess he just assumed that the Impale was going to hit, and because of that, they don't get that first blood, and... Killing off a mid lane hero, when it's a Medusa especially, for first blood, is pretty much the best case scenario you could ask for. Magicka is going to Vendetta up and go in for round 2, however. This time there's a Ventral Spirit here, but he has a Haste Rune. Maybe he can get in, kill the Medusa, and get out with that Haste. But it only would work if King is going to move up. And he sees Stalkat here, he knows there's a level 6 in the next Assassin. If he walks up, or maybe he doesn't even have to walk up, Vendetta not going to be used, just a spike out of nowhere. Battle Hunger is there as well, but they have to disengage. Here comes Miggy, gonna try to help out. Scarath Mage is in the side as well. It's a 3v3 over in the mid lane, but Stalkat just can't get close. Two melee heroes versus three ranged heroes. That was just a little bit too obvious, to be honest. I mean, you don't see the Nyx Assassin anywhere. It's actually not that likely that he's gonna go gank the side lanes or anything, especially top lane. Nothing to really gank there with Pat Rider being out of commission. So, I think Stalkat, it was kind of a waste of time for them. Although he's going back to farming now, did have the stacks being done by Amazing on the Sky of Mage. But of course, speaking of stacks, there's lots of them in the Alpha jungle. One triple stack, or it was a quad stack in the big camp, I think, in the middle of the jungle for Batrider. So he's up to 1.4k gold, just about. 
He's level 6, once again didn't skill up that lasso immediately, but for now, I guess I, he doesn't need it anyway before he gets the blink dagger, I guess, not being on a lane or anything. But I really like that Alpha are stacking up for the battle to guarantee that early blink. Yeah, what else are the supports going to do? Like, the Ancient Apparition can poke at Wadafaka occasionally, but at a certain point, Razor's going to have this lane on lockdown just by himself. And he is doing decently versus the Phoenix. He's doing very well, in fact. So, Miggy is going to stack up, and of course, uh, the Ventral, or speaking of Ventral Spirit, going to die up towards top lane as he gets jumped upon by the Slark. Castle Shot Seal helping out there as well. Mantis going to draw the first blood, and he's very close to Midas Gold. Do you go for Midas in this game if you're Slark? I think just going for an early blink maybe we might be a little bit better here, just... Midas, as good as an item is on the Slark specifically, I think this game you want to just take command of this game early on and double blink but. is always going to be nicest bottom lane. Bakemono might go down here, Impale, Magicka, he was waiting for way damn too long and now is he going to even go for it? Yes he is, he's going to land it as well and one more right click from that bird and they're going to go for more Icarus type, he stops it in time, no more fire spirits, but I think he's gonna get the kill anyway, Ice Vortex, is it gonna be enough? Nope, it's not, what the fuck are getting a double kill on the bottom lane, magic on the next assassin, man, he, he waited long and hard for the impale, but in the end, did connect, and, well, easy double kill. He didn't actually need to cast it, because just the threat of impale was making the razor run literally in circles, so if the razor isn't actually running away, then the Phoenix is attacking him and you're doing damage regardless. You don't need to throw that stun. And at a certain point, the Razor was like, okay, screw this, I'm just gonna run back to my base. And then Magicka's like, okay, well, thanks for running a straight line for me. I'm just gonna use my Impale now, which I've been pump faking for the past couple of seconds. So Magicka playing that one up pretty much perfectly is now gonna have a chance to jump King right now. There is a level one mana shield on the Medusa. There's a Venge here as well, but the Centaur is doing most of the work. If King gets to his tower, he will be pretty safe, but he can instead go for Hari. It's a little bit more difficult because it's a full HP Venge. And looks like Nick Assassin is instead going to find the Batrider. I mean, there's so many possible outcomes here, but it looks like he'll try to Vendetta gank the Bat. That will not work, especially with Spike missing. The turnaround potential here from Alpha, though, is pretty much non-existent. They need the Lasso, and they don't have the mana for it. They did even TP in the Ancient Operation, so I guess Axe came doing some economical damage anyway. But there is a blink now on the Batrider, at the same time though with Axe finishing up, I think it was at least a triple stack, maybe even a quad stack in the big camp. Has his own blink there also finished, so both of them get it at the same time, let's say at the 10, 10 minute mark. Who's gonna have a more successful game though? It just really comes down to how you're gonna be able to lane, how much assistance will you have with those blinks. And for X game, having a Nicker style like we already pointed out earlier, also, having the possibility of a Vendetta gank at the same time as the Blink Berserker's Call comes out. It just feels like at the moment they have a slightly better setup for it. If Alpha had a level 6 on Ancient Operation, maybe it would be just in their favor, but at the moment, I think X Games Blink is gonna have a slightly bigger impact. Yeah, I think I would agree. Like, if this Razor was someone who's a little bit more bursty and someone who isn't going for a maxed out unstable current build, that's really weird to talk about that a little bit later. But if they had a lot of burst damage on this hero, if he was anyone else with burst, then Lasso into burst damage, that's a very easy kill. But Medusa's not going to be doing a lot of damage to help out a Lasso kill. The Ancient Apparition isn't level 6. The Ventral Spirit only has one point magic missile. Yeah, you'll be able to get the Lasso on someone, but you actually have to kill them off afterwards, and no one is actually providing that damage. So X game, the Axe doesn't really need that help. He will go in and do everything by himself if he needs to. But he's going to smoke up with four of his allies and as a five-man squad look to kill off this Razor or anyone else they could find. Or just take the tower if they force everyone out. The tower is pretty much already dead. Miggy has no TP though and if he shows his face he will just die. They're going to collapse though off to the left side. They will miss the Batrider. Blink Dagger reveal. Blink call though onto Bakamoto lining up for that impale. This Razor is in a lot of trouble right now. The pack will kill him off. That's going to be one kill on the Razor. Miggy is going to try to hide between the tier one and tier two. Will he get away with this? Don't move, Ancient Apparition. Just don't move. Okay, it looks like they don't know he's there. So the Ancient Apparition has a free pass out, but the tower is going to die. Yeah, so they get the kill. They're going to get the tower. That's the second tier 1 tower going down as well in this game. Phoenix, he used the Icarus type just to get the last hit for it. And with that last hit, Hand of Midas secured. Hand of Midas was also the item choice for the Slark. And after that, Overclub. So maybe straight out PKB. It's probably not even that bad of a choice, to be honest. Stone Gaze, yes, it can still petrify you even through the PKB, but... Yeah, well, yes, like you can get lassoed, but the physical damage I don't think is going to be high enough for quite some time still for Alpha to actually kill off the Slark when he is PKB'd, even if he gets lassoed at the time. 
So I mentioned it before, Razor has gone for maxing out Unstable Current. This is probably the most uncommon build you'll see on this hero, and I don't even know if it's common enough to call it a build. He's going to get jumped once again. Mystic Flare is there this time. Bakamono is going to get decapitated. Uh, I guess to be fair, no skill build difference would have saved him there, but Unstable Current... Or wait, hold on, top lane. Magicka is stalking King once again. Has the Phoenix coming in. Impale is going to once again be off the mark. We were talking about some lag issues in game one. Maybe that's coming into play in game two. But yeah, Razor's Unstable Current will protect him against the Skyrath Mage bolts. And Magicka's Mana Burn, and that's about it. I don't think this is a game where you max out Unstable Current. I don't know if there are games where you max out Unstable Current first. Yeah, I think Plasma Field is just a hell of a lot better. At the moment, having Plasma Field level one, even if they hit an Ice Blast on somebody, will they even have enough damage to properly follow that up, especially now that X game, not only did Axe get the blink now, getting towards his next item, although looks like it's gonna be a 4 staff, does have the ring of region in his inventory, or I guess there's a tiny chance of building like a pipe for the team straight out, would that be a viable choice for the Axe? It is probably not needed, the magical damage of Alpha really isn't high, it's mostly physical actually that they're doing with Razor and Medusa down the line, and the supports aren't doing that much damage either. Uh, it's a reasonable pick, but I think four staff in general is just going to be a little bit better, especially when you are going up against a razor. You got to get your allies or yourself out of that static link. I, I was, I have to say, expecting him to go for like a vanguard into crimson guard, possibly just tank up a little bit like, against the razor right clicks. Even Medusa, I mean, activate the crimson guards and his split shot isn't that scary for quite some time because Medusa, he's not the hero who builds like straight out damage items you go for like stats i have sky Manta style something like that maybe a lincoln sphere in certain games so i think crimson card might have been like a great item pickup at the moment though i guess 1.1k hp is definitely nothing to laugh at anyway blink berserker's call with the mystic there ancient seal as well dunk came out a tad early but they get the kill anyway just mystic flare boosted up by an ancient seal it's just too much damage hey man if you get that ancient seal with the magic damage of calling blade it doesn't it does just a little bit less than the kill threshold, I think. Or, I mean, if it was a max ancient seal, so... It's not the worst. It's just an extra nuke and it gets the kill anyway. Not what you want to be doing, but hey, it does, does something. It killed off the Batrider. I just noticed that Alpha actually haven't gotten a single kill. I kind of would just, like, expect them to get a kill by this point, but... Having a Razor with the super passive build, having supports who are equally passive, if not more so, and a Batrider whose Blink Dagger has been used so far just to escape, it's not really too surprising to see why Alpha haven't really gotten that much done. And in the meantime, X game, you can see them staking out the enemy jungle or enemy uh, top lane with wards. They have very aggressive map vision. Blink. Oh, no, Berserker Skull. Magic Missile came out before and Stalkat might even be in some trouble. Swap back as well now. There's going to be a lasso, I think. Berserker Skull is used. Trying to TP out. Oh, God. Are you kidding me? Nope. Flame Break does stop it in the end. That would have been a huge escape, but nice kill by Alpha there, did have to waste, or not waste, but pull in a couple of TPs there as well, but now Magicka on the hunt with the Vendetta, might find something, might not, we'll see. Slark though, SNY finished, gonna be a real speedy, just slippery fishy, and Alpha, they're gonna struggle a hell of a lot to kill the Slark in this game, I think. Oh, Courier, no! Go. Oh. Well, poor Courier, oh, no. in the meantime... Yep, they jump in. Bakamono dropping very low. Ice Blast will be lethal here. 4k Warrior will do the damage in the end with that pack. Now they try to disengage from the Stone Gaze. Nice Impale from Magicka. Gonna connect onto two as Icarus dive forward into that sun. With the Fire Spirits already down, Medusa Batrider gonna try to do what they can to kill off this egg. It might shatter, it will. Phoenix gonna die, but they will also lose the Medusa in the meantime. Magicka still at very high amounts of HP. 4k Warrior still is alive. Haka <laughs> is so kind of salty in this game. Either way, it's still like a decent trade for X game taking two for three. Yeah, it's definitely not bad considering, I mean, you lose a Sky of Mage, you don't care about that, I think. Even the Phoenix is an offlaner, not that big of a deal and has the Hand of Midas, so he's gonna have the gold income anyway. And you get the enemy Medusa, such as the biggest kill for sure. I think Pokemon died there as well to begin at the start of the fight. So, just the course being kept down on Alpha and Medusa is number two in net worth. But that's not saying a hell of a lot. I mean, Manta Style is finished now, so we're gonna help out a little bit, maybe create some confusion. Then again, if you get Berserker's Cold straight after using the Manta Style, it's just gonna be more counter helix procs. 
Yeah, this is just one of the many items that King actually needs to grab if he's going to have any contribution in this game. And, well, if you look at other items that Alpha are getting, there, there are none. There's still the, just the Blink Dagger and the Bat Rider. Razor has next to nothing, just drums. They're going to look for Magicka right now. Firefly up, and that's a clean lasso. Can they kill off this Nick Assassin? Do they have True Sight here? They will have enough burst, albeit barely, and the Nick Assassin will go down. The Shatter Tormentor even used the Shockwave just after the Nyx Assassin died would have been just <laughs> so devastating for Alpha had it been denied like that. As Mantis gets hit by the Ice Blast but nowhere even close to getting shattered there but he's completely out of mana. Gonna TP home finally. And with the Shadow Dance, with the SNY, he is gonna be hasted at all times when there's no vision from Alpha there as Alpha. Going for the tier 1, Glyph comes out as you should use the Glyph anyway but Axe. He's ready to initiate, he's gonna go in Blink Berserker Call, only catches Hurry, but it might still be fine if he gets the tongue. He's not gonna get it at the moment though, misses it in fact, and now the Sun, the Supernova comes up from the back lines, doesn't do any damage to Stalkat, gonna lose his life for two heroes. But what the fucker, he's gonna come back in and they're gonna jump on Amazing. It's a two for one, now what the fucker, does he really go in? 4k Warrior does want to come in and help Batrider, gonna get impaled, just long range as fuck, I wanna dropping extremely low to the pounds, will go down there. In the end, free for free as King will TP out successfully. But I also want to point out that Magicka has gone for maxing out Spike Carapace instead of Mana Burn. I mean, yeah, that's a fine way to go as well. I don't think there is a really correct build for an Assassin, but this is uh, going to be reasonable enough. That was just a really chaotic engagement, though, by X Game. Having Stallcat jump in first, not really getting the best call to start things off, had two units caught, Vengeful Spirit and one Creep. Far, far, far from ideal. And then the Phoenix jumping behind enemy lines to grab no one with that supernova. It did pretty much no damage. So that's uh, two initiation forms that are pretty much instantly going to go down the drain. And they had no Slark there, no Nick Assassin there until very, very late in that fight. So Alpha pretty much get a free one. Also the tier one tower going down there as X game kind of slipping up in their, uh, in their just ability to assemble their heroes all in the right place at the right time. So Alpha, they had a long time where they had no kills, but now they're looking pretty good. Might not be for much longer though, because Bakemono, he's on the bottom lane. There's quite the creep wave here, and Stallcat's right around the corner. He's not going to go in for this Razor though. So, I have a question for you. Looks like Phoenix is building towards the Aganim Scepter. Is it even a worthy item on the hero? I mean, it may pay out to just pull somebody in, get him back with full HP. But there's also a chance that the egg will just get destroyed and not only do you yourself die, you're gonna kill your teammate with it. I mean, yeah. how good of an item is Aghanims on the Phoenix? In this particular game, there's nothing you really need to be refreshing. Like, I think the best thing I've seen was you grab a Phoenix with a Terror Blade and then you refresh the Metamorphosis because the cooldown is like that of an ultimate. And in that case, it's, the upside is actually there. In this game, oh wait, hold on, call onto two, this time onto two heroes. Mystic Flare as well, plus a two man impale, plus that sun. It's gonna be doing so much damage. Bakemono is gonna get abandoned by the rest of the team, will get decapitated on his way out. And that's the team fight that X game wanted. It pretty much doesn't get better than that. Two man call into two man devastation. And X game are conveniently right next to a tier two tower. They can just go for that straight after. That's a nice team fight for them. Just absolutely perfectly set up. All of the just spells lined up perfectly. And not only that, the stone gaze was also used on the Medusa, so suddenly there is absolutely nothing Alpha can do to defend this tier 2 tower, I think. Next game though, they even have Slark just pushing out top lane already. Does have another ultimate orb, so is it now a Scotty or is he still going for Lincolns just to be absolutely safe as oh we're gonna have King, they're gonna get jumped upon. Spike Arpus to stun him up, but no impale to follow. Okay, so just threatening the Medusa a little bit and not following up. And yes, it is going to be the Lincoln Sphere, but X game, is it time for Roche now? Uh, it seems like it might be. Slark can still go for a Scotty down the line. Has an amazing score right now, 505, plus a hand of Midas. Plus, he has a lot of momentum with the team in general. So, he will have a lot of items by the time this game ends, I think. So, going for a Scotty next. Should be fine for the Slark or a Basher. Either one would help him do quite a bit. Uh, Roshan, as far as killing it off for X game, is actually fairly difficult. Nick Assassin is terrible at it. Slark is actually really bad at it as well because Essence Shift doesn't work with Roshan. And the other three heroes just don't do anything. They're great at fighting in the Roshan pit, but they're not good at killing off Roshan. So I don't really think it's going to be a huge priority for them, especially since Alpha with the Batrider have an innate advantage there. Plus Ice Ball, which is going to connect onto pretty much everyone. Ice Blast, so damn annoying. And well, 
thank god it's not Aghanim spuffed at the moment, so no 17 second duration or anything like that. But they're gonna go back in, they're gonna try and... Alpha, they know it's going on, but can they even contest this with a nice, well, another nice Ice Blast with the Stone Gaze as well? Maybe so. But like you said, X game, they have a pretty good lineup to just fight in Roche Pit. So it looks like, even though it's going to take them a pretty long time, in the end, they should be able to just finish up Roche. Well, I guess Sunray is pretty good at killing off Roshan. Get a lot of healing there, so that's pretty sweet. Of course, that only works when the Ice Blast isn't working. And here comes another one right now, so... The Alpha, they're going to know that they're now way too late. And Roshan is going to be claimed by X game. Most likely, it's going to be Mantis to grab that double life. Uh, they could probably make a push happen after this, just because they are so far ahead. Or they could just wait and then just sit on their advantage right now. Phoenix has finished that Aghanim Scepter, which I realize I did not finish talking about. Uh, there's nothing really worth refreshing. And I think in this particular game, even though it's nice to have the stats and everything on your Phoenix, the risk is just a little bit too high. There's no substantial upside for the X game side. So I would much rather like to see some sort of utility kind of armorish item for the Phoenix. A Necro Book, a Shiva's, a uh, Force Staff, items along those lines. They're gonna charge forward, look for Hari, and it looks like he will get interrupted out of his TP. That'll be one kill on the retreat for X game. Yeah, it's only support, but still X game in. They get Roshan, they get the kill after that as well. Not too bad at all. And like I said, it's just Agonyms. I would have preferred something else as well. Maybe even go for like straight off Hex. He's getting enough gold for it, to be honest. Maybe even get like a Yule Scepter for yourself, make sure you're gonna survive a little bit longer or just throw somebody up in the air, who knows. Like you said, Shiva's like anything else really, but I guess it might be fine in a sense that if for some reason you're gonna or not gonna have to use the Supernova in a fight, you can use it after the fight to just get somebody back to full HP without them having to go back all the way to base, something like that. And I actually don't know how the Supernova works with Agon Scepter. Do you have to target the ground now? Or do you just like right click? It might interrupt Wadafaka's ability to effectively go in and supernova when he exactly wants to. It'll be minor, of course, but uh, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I've never bought the Aghanims. Yeah, same here. I mean, it does say that it gets a cast range of 500, I do believe. So, oh, Magicka. He's gonna find Hardy, I think. Starts with the Impale, so no Vendetta damage. Mana Burn won't do just nearly enough just because of Ancient Spirit. Not known for her massive intelligence. Stalker tried to blink Berserker Skull, didn't quite get it though. But now, there is a BKB on Razor, so his survivability is going to be boosted by quite a lot just because Phoenix won't do anything, Nyx Assassin won't do anything either. And there's not that much physical damage on next game, to be honest. Yeah, the Slark is going to eventually get to that point, but going for a Sanji Nyasha, Hand of Midas, Lincoln Sphere build, his damage isn't really that high. So, uh, it will be Alpha just sitting back into a defensive posture right now. and. Well, BKBs on both the Medusa and the Razor, not really the items you want to be going for. But at the same time, they need to be able to fight. Otherwise, they're just going to lose all their structures. And it's already happening. Like, top lane is already cleaned out. And mid lane is soon to be the same way. And bottom lane, tower is at about half HP. And the next game, they should be rotating down there very quickly and dealing with that. So, Alpha, they're on full defensive right now. And this is going to restrict Medusa's farming space. She needs so much more in this game, if she's going to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of the X game heroes. Yeah, it's definitely true, I mean, it's not like she has bad farm because the only one having more is the Slark. Yes, Slark has quite a substantial amount, more 5,000 or 4.8 to be exact. But the others, I mean, X, not that scary of a hero, doesn't scale all that well into the late game, to be honest. Phoenix, to be honest, it's, it's hard to say because Sunray, it can do a hell of a lot of damage, plus, of course, the heal aspect from that as well. So Phoenix, if he gets a nice Sunray, he's going to be substantial throughout the entirety of this game. But Medusa, just if X game drag out this game too long, they might just be, or well, might come to regret it. Yeah, but it seems like right now they have the right game plan in mind. Use the Aegis to drive these pushes and then just try to lock Alpha in their base so that the late game, if it does come, it's going to come a lot later than it really should. So X game, they have now no more clear objectives to take. Roshan's going to take back the Aegis and I think about uh, a minute and a half, I think the timer said. So uh, they have a little bit more time to make a play. And it will be risky going up the high ground as they're walking into Ice Blast, they're walking into Lasso and a Stone Gaze. So I think it might just be they're going to farm up for another round of items right now. Get Slark something that helps him hit a little bit harder, like that Eye of Scotty or Basher. Uh, does he have any on the courier? It's, it's gonna be a Scotty. It's pretty much already there. So grab the Scotty, maybe wait for one more item afterwards, and then make a play. Or wait for a pickoff 
With the Nyx Assassin now packing the Dagon, getting a pick off is going to be rather feasible for X game. Yeah, it's just... Do you think Nyx Assassin, is he going to keep on upgrading the Dagon or do you go for something else after this? And I don't even think this is a Dagon game to begin with, mostly because he got it way too late to really be effective. And it's a good item for a mid lane Nyx Assassin, but I think in this game, the faster you get away from the Dagon, the better you're going to be off. Like, if you get, a, again, like four staffs to try to deal with this Razor static link, or any sort of utility aura ish kind of item, hell, even a Necro book to deal with Medusa a little bit, those would all be preferable, I think. Oh man, this might be in some trouble, but nobody's even trying to stun him. Lincoln Spear is Pope now, there's the stun, gets rid of it with the Dark Pack, but Lassa will follow. They were baiting it out, and I think Slark will go down here, maybe can pop his ultimate. He can, he's still alive, just needs to get the pounce, nobody's blocking it. Ice Blast, a tad too late there. Oh man, had the Ice Blast been there when they actually went for the fight, could have been an easy kill, but... Just 2.6k HP with that Scotty finished, a little bit too much for Alpha to handle, and that was a 4 versus 1. And they couldn't kill him. Yeah, if the Ice Blast came just a little bit sooner, maybe they didn't expect the Slark to be there, so they didn't have the projectile already in flight. That could be the difference, or that probably will be the difference between Slark living and dying, but they invest pretty much everything they have. The Lasso, they use Eye of the Storm, they use the Stone Gaze. A minor opening for X game, maybe they're going to put a little bit of damage into the structures of Alpha while those skills are down, but man, 4K has got to feel pretty good about his tannings right now. He knows that it is damn hard to kill him off. Of course, it's the Ice Blast that makes the difference. If Ice Blast lands, Slark dies. That's pretty much as simple as that. Yeah, it's definitely true. And the thing is as well that would it have been any other, like really any other core hero escaping like that, they would have had to go all the way back to base unless they get the lucky region rune. But for Slark, just that Shadow Dance being level 3, back to full HP in no time. And oh, Blink Berserker's Call does catch Mingy trying to pull him out away. Pounce is there, Misty Flare a little bit off target as Hardy he runs through it, Dark Pack to get the kill. But now, Ice Blast does connect on a couple, they get the tank, Slark, will he keep on going? Maybe so, Supernova, I don't think it's gonna be destroyed by Pokemon himself, but Stalkat does lose his life. Stunned up on Razor, now they're gonna get Slark with the lasso, he's gonna go down, I think, Shadow Dance already in cooldown. They do manage to get the kill, even without all of them, just committing there, but Pokemon loses his own life, what the fucker. Petrified up at the last second of that Stone Gaze, I believe, and well, Sunray couldn't get him to the high ground there. So, great defense from Alpha, a 3 for 3 trade in kills as Magicka. Does get the level 2 Dagon for himself, but X game, I mean, the start wasn't bad at all, but just Ancient Depression surviving, getting off the Ice Blast was so crucial there. And the Ice Blast also connected onto the Slark, and then as soon as it did connect, I don't know if it did the damage, but it definitely got the chill effect. Slark went instantly into the Shadow Dance afterwards because he was being focused, so you have to. So he pretty much used his ultimate just to buy a couple of seconds of right click time, which is not how you want to be using it. You want that regeneration. And the Slark was brought down by the Alpha side. It was very difficult for him to do so, but that's just one of the many defenses that they're going to have to make in this game. The Razor going down there kind of stings for Alpha, but Medusa gets to live. She was surviving through the entire thing, got the final second of Stone Gaze onto the Phoenix, who kind of was screwed over by his own Icarus dive. But uh, the Medusa living just means that she'll get a little bit more gold for the future, maybe building towards that Eye of Scotty, which she will have very shortly, 400 gold left, until she has that one completed. So King is sitting on quite a lot of cash right now, and this Medusa, or Medusa in general, is the type of hero that can instantly win you the games later on. Magicka's going to find Ancient Apparition in his own jungle, snipe him with a level 2 Dagon, and then be on his merry way. But killing off an AA, it's only going to be relevant if you're knocking on the front door of the enemy base. Otherwise, Ancient Apparition is going to respawn and, well, his Ice Blast is pretty much always going to be up. Yeah, and X game, I think maybe they're just going to wait for an extra ocean now. They do have that Aghanim's level 3 Culling Blade for X, so definitely a good thing to have, but for example, Medusa last fight wasn't even forced to use his PKB. Still a 10 second charge for him. That's just how well it went for Alpha, to be honest. It could have gone even a little bit better still, since Vengeful Spirit pretty much died after having swapped out uh, the ancient depression, but now Stalkat on the hunt together with the Nyx Assassin. No Vendetta activated just as an enemy's rune. Blink for Circus Call, a little bit off target, but Hari, I think he's gonna go down anyway. Impale, yes, stops the magic missile from coming out. No dunk needed though, but I think the dunk would have been a lot better just for the extra movement speed. And now Ice Blast will connect, forced after the wrong way. Doesn't get to the low ground. Now he gets the creep kill, but he's gonna go down in the end anyway. So Nyx Assassin snatching the kill with the Dagon, I think, screwed over Axe Big Time. Yeah, and as an assassin, well, I mean, an assassin's in your name, so you should be looking for kills, but you really need 
the movement speed and just the ability to escape with that calling blade more so than you need the execution. It's a vengeful spirit. She's not really going to escape. If she swaps someone else in, that is probably going to be better for you just because you have an opportunity to get a more important kill. But the execution on Axe is so important, especially when you're taking kills or taking fights rather that close to the enemy base. You could expect there to be some backup incoming. And well, Axe, I mean, he has four staff blink dagger, but you can't always expect to be able to use those perfectly and actually escape. So Axe is going to die giving his life for the Vengeful Spirit. That's going to slow down X game for, at the very least, another 20 seconds, probably another 30, 45 seconds, until Axe gets back up. They're going to try to dominate the enemy jungle in the meantime, but really they're just waiting for Roshan. And this Roshan is going to be scouted by the time it comes up by the Ancient Apparition, who I'm pretty sure is just going to be lobbing ice balls into the pit from here until he sees it coming up back again. Uh, look at what the fuck are now. Eagle Song picked up, so Phoenix, Butterfly... Is he actually going to transition into a right-click core now? It's probably just the shotgun for shenanigans. Is it even that good, though? The Maybe blade. if the Dagon comboed up, it can definitely be fine. Also, if you can get that E-Blade... I mean, sometimes you might even want to use it on the Slark, for example. Definitely not like the ideal situation, but... If somebody is getting too heavily focused by right-clicks, you can try to E-Blade them. Up against Razor and Medusa, though, stopping their right-clicks is going to be near impossible because they still have really long durations on the BKBs. 9 seconds or never mind, 8 seconds on the Razor, but Medusa still holding on to that longest 10 second BKB. Yeah, I'm not the most experienced Phoenix player, but I'm pretty sure Shiva's guard would do a very similar thing without having him to work as hard. Like, if you're going to be picking up an Ethereal Blade just to save your allies, first of all, that's never really what you want to do because it has so much other... its potential is so much higher than that. But, uh, yeah, the Phoenix's damage, magical damage output is Icarus Dive, Fire Spirits, and at this point you don't really cast those skills for their damage output. You cast them for their attack speed, for their mobility, and you, you can't actually Supernova and Ethereal Blade. I don't think that'll work, so... If you're Supernova, uh, is... do your aura still go through it? And I have no idea. Phoenix if you have, like, is, an like, AC way or something. my time in Dota 1. <laughs> well... I don't play Phoenix. Roshan? Does go down now, 3.5k up on Slark, hopefully gonna go for some form of a damage item next, whether it be Basher, maybe Monkey King Bar, who knows. I mean, there's, there's bound to be a Butterfly on Medusa at one point, right? Yeah, it, it should be a part of the build for pretty much any Medusa game, and well, after the Eye of Scotty Manta style, it seems like it will be a logical item to pick up eventually, so maybe Mantis is just gonna wait until he sees that Eagle Song as confirmation before he actually pulls the trigger, but yeah, if you pick up an MKB as Slark, you're going to be pretty happy with it. Or you can just go for an Abyssal, that's good too. Yeah, it's definitely not a bad item to have ever, to be honest, but E-Blade is finished up on Phoenix, so they have the combination with a level 3 Dagon. Mystic Flare as well, definitely lots of damage, but are, are they betting it all on pretty much getting the Berserker Skull before a BKB comes out? I'm pretty sure they are. I mean, what other options do they have? 4K is going to run straight into Bakamono. There's a Medusa here, so Stone Gaze cover is possible. 4K is going to charge right into that Stone Gaze. He will not get turned to stone, however. Ice Ball going to come in, will not connect onto the Slark, who's still chasing forward with that Aegis in tow. They will assassinate the Vengeful Spirit just with that Vendetta hit. And now they have a slight, slight opening go in, seeing no Stone Gaze, no Eye of the Storm up. But can they actually get there in time? I don't know if they can. Because an Ice Blast is going to come in soon. And it will soon be Aghanimed. Oh god, the Aghanimed Ice Blast is going to be so devastating for X game. I don't think they're sporting any BKBs. Nope, none of them. There is a Cloak on Amazing, but that's about it. Maybe he's building a pipe. I mean, to be honest, if there's a 17 second duration Ice Blast, the pipe will get the full just worth of it anyway. But now, they are knocking on the door. Of course, they have the Aegis, so Slark is just going to be a so-called Siege Machine at the moment. Blink Berserker Skull does miss. I mean, they had Vision of it as well. I mean, I don't think anybody was close by with in the past couple of seconds, but now the last I want to stalk it. He's just going to lose his life immediately, I think. Bakamano does get stunned. Impale as well. Stalk it's still alive with the Berserker Skull. Bakamano, he's going to go down. E-Blade, I guess, too strong, although the Egg now will lose its own life. Manta still is used, but the Illusions don't do anything. And now, oh they save Stalk it. Back to full HP. He doesn't That's know he's alive, though. He doesn't realize that he's still alive. Now he's going to realize, but he's way too late. He already got focused down by the Medusa. Bakamono on the front line is going to chase forward for the Skywrath Mage. Stalkat needs to force after the high ground. We'll get there, but the right clicks are going to kill him off anyway. That is just so much miscommunication there from X game. If you're Axe, do you 
he didn't move. He had to think he was dead, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, the salt. To be honest, I mean, probably speaking in old chat like that isn't considered as being mannered, but it's 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 funny for us to be honest. But this actually, I mean, it must be true. There's there's nothing that could have stunned him straight after he came out like that. But mid lane, we might see a kill on Medusa. Slark is there with the invis. Has the patch as well. They're gonna go for the battle right there first. Pound stop. Easy kill with the dark pack. But oh, Ice Blast is flying. Is it Aghanim's buff by now? Yes, it is. So Slark might be in some trouble in all fairness. He's gonna try to escape. Gets the shadow and stuff. There's the people with Berserker's Cold. The dunk does not fail. Comes out in the end. King does TP out. So Medusa does stay alive. The most important hero for Alpha. But still. Nice two kills, and Alpha just weren't expecting the Slark to just creep up on them like that. Yeah, an invis rune on Slark is, at this point, exactly what you want. That or a double damage rune, and well, Alpha, I mean, there's no Shadow Blade on Slark, so they weren't really expecting that, and you can't really expect that. So, 4K getting a free roll there, and so they take out two very important heroes very quickly, in fact. So, you know, having the Medusa get away is going to be a pain for them, as she now has her butterfly on the way, is very close to being able to complete that, actually. So. It will be another item that X game have to slog through, but man, 26 to 14 and still X game, they're in a pretty good position in this game, but it's slowly getting worse as Medusa picks up more and more farm. And man, if that mid lane fight went just a little bit differently, maybe they could be looking at a Rax advantage right now. Yeah, it's just X game, they have a 15,000 XP and gold lead. Somehow though, unable to do much with it. Of course, they did manage to force at least one buyback, I think, in the previous fight when they went high ground. Yes, Razor had to buy back because he got chumped with just getting E-bladed and Mystic Flare down. So there's definitely a lot of damage from X game if they can get it when the BKBs are down. But for now, they're gonna have to just find the perfect openings. Last time around it was, I think, Razor BKB TPing out like 30 seconds before the high ground push, so his BKB was on cooldown, so they got that opening. But can they somehow or reliably bait out BKBs, disengage themselves and come back in once again like 10-20 seconds later? It's gonna be hard, but they actually could just kill off the Batrider. Well, that's the that's like the best way to breach high ground. Ice Blast also used, so it's not a long cooldown, but for 40 seconds, you should feel rather safe. And they are gonna try to pull out the buyback from the Batrider, and that will fail because he doesn't have one. X game, they are very close to the enemy side of the uh, map right now with two lanes. So, 4K gonna start up towards the top lane with his Abyssal. He's doing a, quite a bit of damage. We'll get forced back, but he has Shadow Dance. That's kind of what it's there for. Stallcat in the meantime looking for a way to jump in. And, uh, well, are they really just gonna try to slow siege both these lanes at the same time? Stallcat will take an opportunity to engage if he finds one. But right now he's working with no vision. So, it will be very, very difficult for this axe to get a blink call that's gonna hit more than one hero. So if you're the Ancient Apparition, oh, never mind, they get the stun onto Medusa, pounds to full as well, they need a little bit more Dagon, not used yet. No PKBs for King either, does pop the stone gaze though, as uh, 4k warrior, no ultimate anymore, nice pounds though before King. Berserker's called up as well, Stalkat, he's taking too much damage as King, does get off his PKB finally, although completely out of mana, Supernova, not doing that much, is anybody in there with him? Don't think so, but, oh, Berserker's called catches Pokemon, oh god, with the Dagon. Gonna be quite an easy kill E-Blade <laughs> to finish it up on what the fuck. I even goes for the Sunray to get to high ground. But that's Razor down for 70 seconds. Yeah, and the Razor was chasing 4k the entire time. And he only hit the Slark like once or twice. So the Razor was pretty much out of that fight. And traded for a Slark that wasn't really gonna contribute anything anyway. They're gonna lasso back onto Watafaka. He has no tools getting out of this. Force that back in, but the call is gonna buy him a little bit of room, but Axe is not too durable right now. He will be brought down 4K, ignoring that entire fight, trying to go instead for the structures. But it will be two heroes going down for X game. 4K will be fine to walk out of this, or at least he should be. He's gonna try to turn around and fight King. That's gonna be a little bit difficult because there is a bat and an AA here. Magicka, very weak, but approaching in. Miggy sees him coming. Magicka is just gonna feed over his life. Yeah, the cold beat will kill him off. No, it's still alive, 17 HP. And he's gonna kill the Batrider 4K before the Nyx Assassin dies. Nyx will live at double digits of HP. They're gonna chase forward looking for King 4K. Still going in. Magicka gonna jump into his death as he misses yet another impale. And now the Slark on the run. Batrider has no form of disable here. Lasso not up for another 15. You can't really outrace a Slark. I think Slark will be fine. He doesn't really want to use his Stone Gaze. His is not Stone Gaze. Shadow Dance, but uh, yeah, he won't have to. He'll just walk his way out. But X game, they still don't take any substantial structural damage. So after all said and done, they can't really call that a success. 
Yeah, and also Medusa does not die there, so... I was hoping for, or expecting X game to do a hell of a lot better, to be honest, and with Saichi Berserker Skull landing on three heroes, had the Slark just joined that instead of doing really minimal damage to the buildings at the same time, with a just pounce, uh, Dark Pact, as well as his right clicks with the Basher being there, I think they might have even just sweeped up everybody there, Axe wouldn't have gotten focused as hard either, so... Maybe it was a slightly wrong decision by Slark. On the hunt once again, without the blink dagger, it's really hard for him to actually catch somebody with a pounce without them knowing for beforehand. But 4k gold anyway on Slark, so what's the next item even? Do sell your Midas go for like an AC Monkey King bar? I guess Monkey King bar now that the butterfly is there. Well, he's gonna start things off by assassinating the Vengeful Spirit, so that's a good start. Uh, yeah, Hand of Midas can be sold off. Sanjin Yasha can also be sold off. Later on, I don't think you disassemble it into Manta style or anything like that. You just sell them off, replace them with bigger items. Uh, going for a butterfly seems reasonable here for Slark, or really the MKB Daedalus. Like any high price item for the Slark is really all he wants right now. Well, he can definitely pick it up as soon as he wants as Medusa. Getting close to being 6 slotted herself as well. Up to 4.2k gold now, split pushing away top lane as Slark. Coming in. Maybe he wants to just bait out the stone gaze, maybe he wants to do a little bit more, maybe cancel the TP or something like that. Oh, pounce misses, so suddenly Medusa is fine, I think. Razor does deny the tower and stone gaze is forced out. Abyssal, nope, not gonna get it in time. So Medusa can't quite TP out. But if he had gotten the Abyssal Blade, would he have been able to chase Medusa down? Because Medusa was a really long way away from his base, and I think yeah, Magicka was also coming closer. Yeah, if. If you get through the stone gaze and you cancel the TP, then Slark gets that kill. Pretty much no questions asked. You can't outrun Maim and I have Scotty and Basher. Just way too many forms of movement speed differential there. Miggy's gonna get jumped by Magicka off the back end. Dagon will snipe the kill and a blink out before the Razor can actually hit the Nyx Assassin. That's actually kind of weird, but they will get the kill anyway. 4k going to rotate on in, looking for Hari. This time the Abyssal Blade will be there, or just the first hit bash. That's good too. That's gonna be two support kills on Alpha. The Vengeful Spirit oh, kill, not going for too important, pressure. but... The what? Slark is going for the Refresher Orb. Huh. Uh, Unless it's a Battle Fury. I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> not the Battle Fury. It, it's it's a really good item for Slark to have. But... Or, or unless he thinks Bloodstone is still built that way. Yeah. <laughs> you, okay, so don't get Bloodstone. <laughs> not 45 minutes into the game. Uh, it's a nice item to have, the problem is that it doesn't matter if you have double Shadow Dance if you get hit with the Ice Blast, like, it's really not good anymore. Yeah, it's maybe just the increased duration and... Does it also refresh Lincoln Sphere? I guess it probably does, right? But uh, in any case, just double Abyssal Blade might be like the most important thing for him in this game. But I think Monkey King Bar itself probably would have just been better, to be honest. Yeah, it... Seems like a kind of mediocre item for Slark in this game. If he was not up against Saint Champerition, getting double Shadow Dance, like that can instantly win you games because you have how much time? Eight seconds to get pretty much up to full HP. So you get a full heal potion and you get all that time to right click while you're stacking Essence Shift all the time. It gets really good then, but not with the Ancient Apparition on the field. So I would have liked to see a MKB or a Butterfly or both eventually, but uh, I'm pretty sure you're not going to sell this Refresher Orb now that you built it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm hoping that's not gonna be the case. Otherwise, that's a pretty huge just loss of, of gold. Stalkat trying to go for a blind Berserker Skull. Doesn't catch anybody, but it's fine at the moment. It's once again just Mantis on the high ground. Ice Blast is coming in, but the Blink stun onto Pokemono. Slark runs out of it, but still affected by that uh, debuff anyway. And he's gonna have to back off for now. 17 second duration is nothing to laugh at. Razor also bought back. So, so for now, I think X game mission accomplished for them. Illusions of the Medusa were split pushing at the same time, but I don't think this tier 3 or at least the Rax are in too much trouble yet. Yeah, X game, they still have the Aegis Cheese though, they're pretty banged up, 4k back up to full HP. So he'll be able to re replicate what he just did very soon. They also have a pipe incoming from the Skyrath Mage, but he needs a little bit more gold to get that. Sunray is going to get them up to full? Uh, yeah, close enough to full. So X game, they can go again, pulling out the buyback of the Razor pretty nice. There are other lanes are not under too much pressure. The top lane will start to push out. Mid lane is pushing in. 
And Blink actually forward for the Batrider. He gets mantled by the Phoenix, though. Now he's going to get bashed by the Slark. Swap out. Hari going to give his life for that bat, and he will very quickly die. Bakamono and King coming in from the side, though. 4K going to get turned to stone as they focus down everyone else. Amazing and Magicka both in a lot of trouble. It's Scarf Mage to fall, and Magicka hiding in a corner. It looks like he is pretty much out of this fight as well. 4K still chasing down Bakamono right now. And Sawcat wanting to use that Aegis. He will use it immediately. 4K, though, still doing a lot of damage. Dagon going to end up killing the next Assassin because of... Die something. I have no idea. King is now getting hot with the call. Losing his mana very quickly. He's now completely out. The sun is going to explode. I think Axe is in there as well. And 4K gets to live. Gets to jump away from that. Sun going to explode. Maybe that pull of the Axe into that uh, sun wasn't the correct decision. I'm pretty sure they could have killed the Medusa if Axe was still there. It's this fight. Madness did a really small amount on the Slark. He was chasing the Razor for so damn long, but... Even with the SNY, it's just Razor. He's so damn speedy with unstable current for himself. Slark does do some damage to the range barracks. Ice Blast is flying and it's gonna impact him as well. He's slowed down by the Medusa and there's no Shadow Dance Medusa. He's just gonna keep on going but the pounce. Gets him just far enough for now as Magicka. He's gonna find Hari. Oh god. Does miss that uh, Impale but that doesn't really matter in the end. Didn't even need to use the Dagon just tanked by the Axe. Alright, so next game, they still have yet to really take any structural damage on the Alpha side. These fights are getting better for X game, and, but they use the Aegis for that one. They had the cheese. Do they still have the cheese? Yes, they do on the Nyx Assassin, who just bought back. So they're looking to end the game pretty much right now. The uh, bottom mid lane now pushing for the Dire, but they are going to try to go for the top lane at the same time. This is splitting their focus by quite a bit, and I don't really know if this is going to be the best way at approaching this. Like, they have... A lot of tier 3 towers down, so the assassin can just Vendetta into the enemy base right now if he wants to. But uh, they have a gem on the Batrider to worry about. Now sentries are down X game. I feel like they're just running into a wall right now. Well, they at least have a Shiva's card now to slow down the attack speed of Alpha and... Of course, slow themselves down as well. Maybe that's going to be enough for Slark to actually get some uptime with the right clicks. I mean, last time around, not too sure, it just wasn't worth it chasing the Razor. Had he gone for like a Medusa straight out after the Stone Gaze ended, maybe could have ended in a better situation for them. But X game, they really have been just trying to go high ground for like, what, almost 30 minutes soon? Maybe not as much, but like 25 at least, I'd say. Yeah, and eventually they might get it. Uh, 4K going to run into a courier, or close to a courier. Not I, quite is it going a, to be a range there. rapier delivering courier? Is it? Okay, hey, someone's I dying mean, in the meantime, but that's not important. Uh, Dusa does have a lot of gold. Is it time for the Doctor? Well, I guess it might be a Shiva's card for Bakemon. It does have the plate mail in the inventory, so might be for the Mystic Staff, but doesn't, it doesn't have enough gold for it. Does anybody else have anything to just get from there? Oh, Slark might be in trouble. Uses the Abyssal Blade, but does get hit by the Ice Blast. He's gonna have to make a run for it. Pounce will come off cooldown, so I think it's gonna be fine. No less so for them to use in the mid lane. They get one kill already on the Vengeful, but Razor is going to keep on chasing Dagon. Does do quite a lot of damage, but not nearly enough for now. But the Berserker's Call, Tonk Range, yes, it's going to be there. Razor down for 100 seconds. Yes, the Phoenix is also dead, but Phoenix can go for Boots of Travels after he respawns. So he can just join the fight pretty fast, and by that time, Razor will still be dead for about 40 to 50 seconds. And yeah, next game, getting a clean initiation over in the mid lane. Slark is a problem just because he is going back into that rat mode that we saw in the last game. But except this time, he is a rat that could just turn around and kill you if you only send one or two heroes at him. So that distraction is Slark up in the top lane, leaving X game to initiate over in mid. They're looking for a jump in once again. Stallcat going to swap places with the Batrider. That's pretty awkward. They're going to miss the Impale onto Medusa. Now popping the BKB. King got the Stone Gaze out. 4K looking to buff out that Stone Gaze will work. He also dodges the Ice Blast. He's taking a lot of damage, however. He does have a Shadow Dance available. We'll use it to heal up once. Now he's going to go for whoever he can get his hands on. Hari, as well as that Batrider, going to go down here. 4K has another Shadow Dance, and he's going to refresh it. There it is. King also going to get pulled away from 4K. However, he is locked to the floor because of that uh, cold feet. King, though, going to take Mystic Flare to the dome. Is going to be dropping. It was 4K still alive right now. Has to disengage, get a little bit more healing going, and he will get out of there alive. King having to buy back. He is going to try to go for Magicka right now. Impale, though, and Mana Burn going to hold him out. In the meantime, mid lane, amazing. Has cleared out most of the threats in mid lane as they try to reinitiate for this Medusa. He's going to go and try to kill off this creep wave in the mid lane. She doesn't really have that much backup, though. Ice Blast once again going to miss 4K as he's going to dive right in for these Raxes. Gets his Lincoln Sphere pop. Taking a lot of damage now. Has to pounce out. Got to get out of there. In the meantime, Stallcat and Wadafaka supernovaing for some reason. I don't really know what that did. 
but uh, they will disengage afterwards. And it looks like that should just about be that. They're going to try to go in for another round, but they might not have that much more gas. Their HP pools are decent, but no Supernova any longer. And, well, Alpha, they have stabilized with all five of the heroes back up. So all they got pretty much, well, lots of kills, some buybacks from Alpha, but only one range Rex. That's that's all they got. It's, it's X game. Look at the graphs. 25k plus network lead, 25k in XP, and they're just struggling so damn hard up against Alpha. Of course, Ice Blast, definitely one of those reasons. You cannot just clump up. You have to stay spread, but that way they cannot really utilize their lineup the best. But I guess next Roshan will be up within the next 3 minutes and about 20-25 seconds. Any time during that, but... Man, X game, how can they be struggling so hard with such an advantage? And just the fact that Ice Blast is so good against Slark and Medusa's Stone Gaze is just brick walling them every single time. They're gonna sit in the Roshan pit and just wait until that's back up. But uh, Medusa, even after having used that buyback, is gonna buy that Divine Rapier. This is a fairly all-in move from Alpha, but I think it is about time to make this call. Roshan, fortunately for X Games, is going to be spawning very, very soon, so they're in a good position to handle it right now. But they, so far, will have to worry about this top lane pushing in. They know that King has a Divine Rapier. They can't afford to let this Medusa also grab an Aegis. I don't know what she would drop for it. Probably the BKB. But, uh, yeah, Divine Rapier Medusa will be just a nightmare for X Game to deal with. So, at the moment, Slark did get Boots of Travels as well as the Monkey King Bar, so we can actually properly attack Medusa now and we might get the fight Stalkat in some trouble. Shiva's card activated to get the stun on Medusa as well. Abyssal Blade to follow. He doesn't get the BKB off. Now he does, but he's already out of mana. I think he's going to lose his life. Immediate patch as well. Supernova comes out. Pakamana tries to go for it, but now he has to back off. They lose the Vengeful Spirit. Magicka does lose his own life, but Stalkat, another Berserker's call, lands on two. This is probably going to be GG. Rapier on the ground. Does Slark pick it up? He doesn't, but I don't think it really matters even. Miggy will go down and... Well... Just one jump on the Medusa, especially with the Drapier getting picked up, and that's just game. Yeah, the Medusa didn't really stand a chance there. She got obliterated first thing. Swap out from the Vengeful Spirit, not quite there either, and it was just the lack of initiation there from Alpha's Batrider that didn't really let them have a fighting chance in that game, but also X game. They were in a pretty decent position to take that fight, so it is X game to take the win, and that's going to be, surprise, surprise, another tie in JDL5. Yeah, it just always happens in the group stage, but to be honest, for a two-game series was a pretty damn long one, I do have to say. Initial start time, three hours ago, so here we are. Second game ended, but it was a 1-1. There's not going to be a third game, guys, because that's just the format of this group stage. Just two games, that's it. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Do hope you enjoyed the casting as well as the games, and if you did... Check out Hefla TV for more content. It is Hefla TV on all the social media, pretty much. Well, for YouTube, it's Hefla Mog, but in any case, I'm Coucher, or I, or I was Coucher. I was joined by Mike Loris and Mike. Any last words? Um, not really. Nice long games, but not boring games either. So, you know, that's that's a good combo. Yeah, it, it is indeed. But guys, this is going to be it, I think, for the evening. We might have a little bit more at 21 CT. We shall see with 4 FC uh, versus P plus 5. We'll see if we're going to have anybody on that, but for now, this is it. Just a few songs to end the stream, and just have a good one.